I think we are ready to start. I would like to welcome to you to this session about principle of direct drilling. My name is Erik Sandal. I'm a local advisor, and uh, I have the pleasure to be the moderator of this uh, session on direct drilling. What I do too is um, I have a stripper header for the combine. So stripper heading and uh, no till with disc drill is for my experience and my opinion going hand in hand. Um, what is a big problem for a disc drill is when you chop the straw, you have a, a mat of chopped straw all landing, lying uh, over each other as the stalks, and you have hair pinning because the disc never ever can cut through chopped straw. It will just push it into the soil and place a seed on the straw and in the slot, and then you have a bit of a mental system, but even worse of that because there's no soil, seed to soil contact. So when we just strip ahead the straw or the, the, the crop, the stalks are still standing and the disc will just run through the stalks and place the seed in the ground, leaving the stalks behind uh, untouched. And another advantage was here this year, or no, it was two years ago, the, the oats were totally green and we were able to harvest it at high speed at 13.5% moisture. So for this, it would have been better to have a forage harvester than a combine. It's so green as it is. That's another advantage to have a lower moisture content at harvest. Higher speed or more output from the combine and I think at least 1% less moisture when stripper heading. Yeah, that was how the, the field looked after reseeding with rye. So that's, this is a concept I take um, for direct drilling or um, what would work best in many conditions. But that's just one tool in the toolbox. It's not, uh, not always necessary and there are many ways, many different ways, but that's one way I do it. Um, yeah, I think so that's for the theory of direct drilling or the principles. Leave residue on top. Best of all, shade the soil all year round. Have living roots all year round, if even possible. I know from very sad own experience it is not always possible. And stripper heading would um, make it easier for many drills. Um, you don't have to use a, a disc drill like I do. I prefer a disc drill, but a, a tine drill would work as well. But you have a higher degree of soil disturbance with a tine drill. So I could imagine for the beginning, or for the start with no-till, it would be easier with a, a tine drill because it's a bit of hybrid between pure direct drilling and, and min tilling because you have a slot that is um, disturbed and there is some decaying process and some mineralization and residue is swept away usually from the tine. So for the beginning it could be easier and better to use a tine drill but for say, talking in theory for getting the, the last or the highest level of, of no till and having all advantages it is necessary to use a tine drill in my opinion. <coughs> now, these are a few pictures from my fields, uh, drilling beans last spring. This was just uh, uh, actually stripper-headed uh, winter wheat in September 2010, always also very wet, so we were just stripper-heading it and then the next rain came and it was already September, so I didn't put any cover crop in it. This is just volunteer uh, wheat in here and I'm drilling straight into it and spraying it off uh, a week or 10 days later than drilling with a little dose of glyphosate against uh, the wheat and some pre-EM herbicides for the beans. And that works very well. So here you see an even establishment. Uh, that was this year very easy and very good uh, warm and dry weather. So with, mint or with, with no tilling you have always uh, water in the soil. So not the, the problems with the cultivation system in the spring, that it's drying out. And especially like the last season, it was a very long, hot and dry period. And cultivated soils just, just dried out and uh, the, the crops suffered from that. So there was no problem in a no-till situation as you don't have any s uh, lost moisture and 
all channels are in the soil intact, so moisture is coming up and uh, good shade. So it was very easy in the spring. Um, this was oats drilled a few days later. Actually, this w should have been a field of, of uh, winter oilseed rape, but it was eaten by the slugs. So slugs are my biggest problem besides rain, as I already said. So this nearly no oilseed rape. Yeah, well, a little bit is left here and there, but it was eaten by the slugs, and I redrilled it in the spring with oats just in with some oats and very good establishment, moist soil, uh, not much, um, yeah, no no competition, so it was a very good crop with uh, 8.6 tons per hectare yield, dry yield this this September. We had a, a dry day to harvest. Um, just another series of pictures here from three years ago. Uh, that was my beginning. I was not drilling at an angle, as you see here. I started the next year. The first two years I dried uh, the tram lines because I found that was very easy, just go round and round. Uh, but after those two or three years, I saw already that the field was a bit um, not, not very level. And so I got the advice from somebody to drill it at an angle, and I tried it, and it was perfect. I just never did it different again, except this wet spring, uh, w uh, wet autumn in October. I started drilling uh, along the tram lines again because there were wet spots in the fields everywhere and it was easier for me to turn, take different directions when I was um, drilling in the tram line. So that was just for emergency, not planned. Um, yeah, drilled after bean harvest and September. I actually, I took the, those photos here as a, a, a spot with couch grass. Uh, I usually try to take photos on, on difficult spots, where it's not, not the best spots, because you can't learn from good spots. Um, you, I take photos from spots that are, have a problem, weeds, wet, poor establishment, to see how it develops, and I try to learn from that. And here you see, th so the glyphosate has worked quite well on the couch grass, but um, yeah, a spot with couch, very big competition for new seedling, especially for barley is very, very sensitive for any competition, but it was not too bad. Well, you still see the spot, it's a bit suffering, but there is a crop, and uh, even that was a wet, wet autumn, so you see, see here uh, water standing in the tram lines, and it developed not too bad on that spot. <coughs> so. That was May. Now it goes on the harvest uh, with a stripper header uh, next July with nine tons yield. That was very good. Uh, next day, drilled suns sunflower and oats as a cover crop, just straight into the stripped straw. And that you have seen that already, that picture in the end of October. Very good crop. Um, very, yeah, I was very happy with that. Then it goes on, observations during winter. I, I always, when a, an interesting situations come up, I go to the field and have a look and if there's something working. And I was uh, interested how different situations on my fields um, uh, look in the winter or during winter regarding soil life. So is there any difference? Obviously for me, just feeling with my fingers and looking with my eyes, no scientific uh, trials or any, any research, just my, my feeling. And I digged some holes on after a night, very uh, heavy frost. There was just a few centimeters snow cover and then a heavy frost that night and the next morning I went out and the extremes were uh, a minted wheat field after oilseed rape. I had to drive back home and get a chisel and a sledgehammer to get into the soil and it was eight centimeters deep frozen. So common situation, everybody knows after such a heavy frost it will be freeze down. But when I came to the field uh, where the oats and sunflower grew until the frost came, there was no frost. And even an earthworm was just underneath the mulch cover. So I, I turned it over with a spade and there came a big earthworm just uh, below the surface. So soil life is still going on there as um, 
the, the growing crop was very close to, I think mid of December came the first frost that hit the, f the cover crop, but until three weeks before this photo, the, the crop was living and, and sending exudates and sending nutrients for the soil microorganisms. And now an interesting observation on another field. That was the field where the, the, the starting screenshot was with a, a drilling at an angle picture. Uh, I'll just make it visible here. So in the autumn or after barley or wheat harvest, I think we are wheat harvest, I drilled cover crops here, uh, spring oats and forage rye, so winter rye. And that was drilled uh, the winter rye for the winter rye a bit too early. So I drilled it both one date, and the winter rye developed a bit too too much, but creeped on the ground as it w it's a winter variety, and the spring oats just grew and make uh, much biomass. And I went to that field after this night with a heavy frost, and expected that the big biomass of the oats, growing until three weeks before this date, uh, would insulate. The, the soil and there was no frost in the soil where the m much insulation was and where just this tiny uh, small rye crop was there should be frost in it because there's no only little uh, cover and no much insulation and but it was the other side so the, the crop that died already was a bit frozen here to just two centimeters but the rye was still living and still working and, and feeding soil microorganisms and there was still heat in the soil or working soil life and, and um, not no frost at all in the soil. So that's uh, proved my, my experience or my, my expectation that, that the living organism is, is f um, yeah, it's working all year round. Another observation is the same field. Uh, I went back when I wanted to or started drilling at 15th April and took soil samples because my idea was to have this uh, uh, overwintering cover crop to pump out water from the soil and to make uh, drilling easier and, and a few days earlier in the early spring. And even from the, the, the rye was developed too far and wintered out, so many plants died over winter. It was a heavy winter in, in 2009, 10. But I took a soil sample just from the first five centimeters, just one meter here in the oats and one meter in a spot with a few plants more, and uh, waited it on the kitchen um, weight for my wife and took it in the, in the uh, oven, in the kitchen oven and baked it for some time to get all the water out and weighted it back and came to the solution that it was 2% different in moisture. This tiny plant here, it's not a big plant, and just a spot where some more were, so my idea was working, that it took so much water up that it would make drilling easier. Uh, and another observation, different cover crops, uh, wheat suppression. So there was, who was at, at Don Rykowski's speech, uh, there was a question about wheat uh, control without plowing. So we can control it with cover crops like the South Americans do. And this is Avena strigosa, uh, um, a more natural oat variety that very, has very good wheat suppression. And it's a very tough uh, stuff. So absolutely covered and there was absolutely no wheat at all. So that's how the Avena strigosa looked in December. Um, that was drilling, so it's really it's really tough stuff. It's it's not easy to cut it. Actually, it's it's nearly not possible to cut it. Here you see a bit hair pinning. The straw is just bending up when the disc is going in the soil. Uh, here you see lots of straw. You really have to dig for for the soil. So absolutely good ground cover. And uh, here you see a patch where I didn't drill it. So nearly no weeds. Um, in in June, and the all other weeds, if there came some weeds, they were suppressed by the beans. So it was a good bean crop, and that will shade absolutely 100% the ground in July, August, or mid till mid August. So I think for eight weeks a year, weeks a year, the ground is totally shaded by the beans. So after a good bean crop, it's a clean field, and that's the way to go for direct drilling and weed control. And just for the en environmentalist, uh, soil erosion here, three, after a heavy rain, 
I took three samples, permanent pasture, direct drilled um, oilseed rape. Actually, here's some some oat um, seed, but but this is an oilseed rape field. So at at November, there's nearly no residue from the oilseed rape left because the earthworms took it all. And here is a, a forage maize field uh, just harvested two weeks earlier, maybe. So the the ground cover is very similar between the oilseed rape. Uh, min tilled, uh, direct drilled, and the bare ground, but tilled field, tilled in, in April, not in November. And you see here the differences. So permanent pasture, only a bit from humic acids, or uh, and nearly the same in a direct drilled field, but with no ground cover, and absolutely brown and with a big sediment after a few days, after uh, untouched, but it in, in spring tilled field of forage maize from my neighbor. And another interesting observation, cash crop or cover crops are catch crops. Catch crops not only for, for nitrogen, which is meant usually, but also for the snow. Here you see uh, on, on two years ago we had a heavy snowstorm and uh, my neighbor's fields tilled, no possibility for the snow to catch, all uh, roads were closed. And here beside my field with the cover crops, even the, the, the ditches are not filled up with any snow. So, um, yeah, that would be some, maybe not good if you go for clearing the streets for the, for the community, but interesting observation. Yeah, the next point, um, I'm very unhappy with the way our scientists are doing research comp regarding no-till because Usual research is always done with a ceteris paribus. So you always change one single point and leave the whole system uh, untouched. But that can't work in, in a no-till situation because no-till is a totally different approach. So that's why you have to forget all before what you did before when you want to do no-till. It's the easiest way. So anybody disagreeing that it would be very strange to compare those two cars under under same conditions be it here on or be it on a motorway or be it on the nobody would ever think about it but our uh, researchers do trials with that they compare different systems only changing one point doing no till uh, research with just leaving the no tillage, doing no tillage, but leaving the same dates for doing operations, leaving the same rotation, um, leaving the same manager of the of the system, so that can't work or can't bring a, an op, a realistic um, uh, result. Uh, you have to, yeah, I know. Okay, so no till is different but it could work probably everywhere, be it with a donkey driven single row planter or a heavy duty in, in high cover crop in, in with a hand uh, no-tilled uh, planter. So principles are universal. The, the principles are everywhere the same, but you have to find your own solutions that fits you, your farm and your, your surrounding or your climate and your soils. So thank you, that was it. Thank you very much. I hope we have some questions, so please come on. Uh, what about your yields? How it's doing uh, compared to your neighbors? And what about <coughs> your economy compared to your neighbors in your area? Um, yes. Uh, very hard to say because we have two very strange years. Um, wet harvest, delayed harvest. Um, I can hardly compare my wheat yields um, or say uh, two years ago I, I was the last farmer in my surrounding combining my wheat. I got it dry but it was four weeks standing in the rain so I have lost maybe two tons an hectare by this period so I can't compare it. So the last two years were so strange I don't really want to compare. Um, the first years were encouraging uh, as I said nine tons uh, barley and um, the variation the last years was very wide, so y you all know the wheat yields this last season and the season before was between 5 tons and 10 tons maybe, when you hear some different, and that's the same 
on my farm I always do one field that way and, and make trials so I have not a real comparison it's very hard to say I know the last two seasons were uh, very difficult for me especially because uh, my you need a transition period when you go to, to no-till the soil has to build up your knowledge has to build up and that takes I would say five maybe to t up to ten years and the last two years really have driven me back so um, I can't say that I have better yields um, had some big problems but always uh, had the situation that I knew what should have went wrong so I knew some improvement for the next year and but I'm sorry I, ha I can't have any real figures that I can say that's it it's yeah not not really possible yes we can invite you in some years and have the experience yeah. next question yeah, my name is Eric I would like to ask you uh, can you use every kind of crop in no-till system or is it a uh, wheat barley and canola um, or whatever the, the wider the rotation the better and the easier it is so so when you change between a, a winter crop and a spring crop and a broadleaf crop and a cereal crop that that's the easiest way to have always a change because also because better wheat management and residue management um, I could imagine nearly every crop um, forage maize could be a problem when you grow it more or year after year because soil structure is so poor after harvest um, sugar beets uh, well it's the establishment of the crop is not a problem even forage maize sugar beets uh, yeah potatoes maybe um but the harvest can be a problem so after harvest of sugar beets and after forage maize you can stand there and have a disaster so you, you're stopped at that moment with direct drilling or you need a longer recreational time um so my uh, fantasy would be enough to have an establishment system for nearly all crops grass seeds, grass seeds yes no problem um could be uh, we we have to find management systems to get rid of the grass maybe after when you have red fescue or anything like that it would be could be a problem but establishment is not a problem harvest is not a problem then it could be int become interesting and with some types of grass but there should be always a solution it takes experience and there is experience around the world but the adaptation to your farm and your situation in this specific year and the situation you're standing in that is not so easy sometimes yes do we have one more question uh, two questions and i think it will be the last two questions hey my name is michael and thank you for a very interesting uh, session i'd like to know uh, do you think you're more busy now or do you think you have more time with your wife or when you're doing it um, <laughs> it is a, a target for me to, or an aim for me to have more time and, and uh, more relaxed life. It is actually, it is more relaxed. I'm not so uh, pushed into the, the, the dates and do this then and, and it, it's a bit more relaxed because I have more opportunities or options to, to do farming now. Um, but uh, <laughs> I have not much, not, I have less time, I would say. My, my wife says always I have less time than before because I do so much research and, and, and reading and information and, and that, that takes a little, or very, very much time. I'm not sitting on the tractor much time, but all around is taking much, much more time. So it's, it's not easy. When you get out the plow and the power hole, just stoop it up and down and it will work for you, but that's different. You don't sit on a tractor much, but much mind work uh, what about the economy uh, yes as I said economy depends on the yield so y you, s you save some money with it uh, certainly but not that much that you can lose or afford to, to lose much yield so uh, it's different difficult to say uh, I'm I wouldn't do it if I was not convinced that it would work and be economic for me, but um, I can't show the economy the last two years. It was too difficult. <coughs> yes, I think we'll take the last questions. <coughs> yeah, my name is Jesper, and I'm thinking about the the heat from the soil for your your new crop that you seed. Um, 
my experience is that when you plow, uh, you're releasing some nitrogen and um, the the crop is growing a bit faster in the in the spring. And I can yep. see we're doing minimum till. They are not uh, that fast as the plowing system. Yep. And uh, now I'm thinking with the, your uh, your straws and everything must uh, be like a carpent. Yeah. That, but I can see your pictures uh, saying otherwise that it's uh, quite warm in the winter time. But what about in the spring? Is uh, the soil getting uh, later warm for seeding than than else? Mm. What uh, are your experience? Yeah, I have measured soil temperatures, but um, it you could be right that the soil temperature uh, is a bit lower in, in a no-till situation. Uh, but uh, but uh, as I said, you are comparing mental and plow, and now think about no-till. So there are three different systems. Don't compare them. You you have to to watch each separate. And as I said, mental is a wired system. Um, so don't compare them. And my observation or, or the rule of thumb is um, in the autumn you need to drill two weeks earlier than you would do under conventional or plowing system. To, to have the same pre-winter development because they develop slower. Um, in the spring, it's the other way around. You have to wait a bit longer to have uh, the soil dried up and warmed up enough. And it looks that your neighboring fields are further ahead, or, or it looks as they are indeed as the first time, but they, they outcompete during June or anywhere because I think the, the reason may be that, as I said, the, the soil life and the, the tilled fields are all down. And they have they have a, a kickstart and a p push from the tillage because mineralization and, and breakdown of residues and all microorganisms. But then the soil has to restructure and soil life has to restructure, and that gives a delay when the no-till soils just grow far away. That's my my uh, idea. I don't know. That's not proven anyhow. But uh, observation is in the spring you you need patience. You, you have to watch all your neighbors working and sit and and wait 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 and but then when when they, they grow they grow just straight through and out compete by june so i always say when um Fingsten is a, a, a festival date uh, what, what is Fingsten in danish Pinkston. E east pinkston yeah uh, i say my my father always said oh look at the neighbors it look much better and better developed and i always said wait until pinkston and when it's they are better by Pinkston. I have done something wrong, but they should be equal or even better. And usually, or I've always seen it was that way. Yes, I think we have to cut off here. Uh, you talked about this pill to forget everything. I think we will not forget your good presentation. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank, thank you.